This is Cole, the owner of Bad Guys, and uh, today we're doing a little uh, highlighter overview on our uh, CNC uh, OEM H and F series manifold. So this was a little test we we're doing. Uh, fortunately, I was not able to be there in person for this test. The customer uh, was nice enough to record a, a pull on his dyno and send me the graphs and the breakdown from his dyno session to give me a a little bit of data to show you guys here kind of what our manifold can do. So on this test the motor was a stock imported F20B it was a manual, it has a stock cams, stock valve spring, stock retainer, stock everything. It's not a H to B swap, it's a full H swap. And so uh, on this test he was on E85 for fuel and uh, the only change was the intake manifold. So on the left side here is uh, the readout after he fitted our manifold and retuned. And this is uh, the right side here. This has his uh, previously ported manifold on it. You know, that was kind of a, a do-it-yourself job. So this is how he tuned uh, a few months prior and drove the car around. So let's get into the numbers here. So the first thing we want to look at here is the averages. So that's the most important thing. A lot of people get caught up with the peak power numbers. And, you know, that can be kind of misleading. The goal is to have as wide of a power band as possible. This is what's going to make your car accelerate, and this is what's going to make it go faster down the track if you're drag racing it, or come off the corner faster if you're road racing it. So on our average here in the horsepower column, from 4700 to 7400 RPM, we picked up about 15 horsepower. And for the same range, again, 4700 to 7400 RPM, we picked up about 13 foot-pounds. So, uh, that's, you know, that's pretty good gains. You know, you're definitely going to feel that on uh, the butt dyno. You know, 15 horsepower across the whole sweep and 13 foot-pounds, you're really going to feel that. And the other important thing to look at here is, you know, uh, this is a stock motor, the stock valve spring, so they really only spun it to about 7,400 RPM to be safe. I know a lot of other guys are spinning these things a little bit higher, but uh, the owner didn't want to risk it. He just wanted to play it safe. And if you look here on the OEM manifold, you can see about 6,700 to 7400 the power just kind of noses over there you know for about let's see that's you know 800 rpm 700 rpm it just noses over that's it that's all she wrote whereas on the cnc manifold you know we're just really starting to get started here from about 6800 to 7400 that's when the big gains really start happening and i think that's because it has the the two inch plenum spacer on it you know the plenum volume really seems to help with the higher rpm range so you see right from about 7000 to 7400 you know this the cnc manifold is just putting hands on the diy manifold 20 horsepower 
plus gains at 7,400. It's making 26 more horsepower. You know, that's really some good gains there. To close it out here, you know, we did a one bolt-on on a completely stock motor. And we went from the DIY ported manifold to one of our CNC ported units. And we picked up 26 horsepower peak, just under 19 foot-pounds at peak and then 15 horsepower throughout the whole RPM range and just under 13 foot-pounds throughout the whole RPM range. Now because this is a stock motor I really think you know an upgraded set of valve springs and the Euro cams, same as kind of an F20B manual cams, are pretty decent from the factory but I would definitely say a little bit bigger set of cams and you would start to really see some big gains here in the higher RPM range. With the CNC manifold having the bigger plenum spacer, the larger th throttle body, and the upper being gutted as well, you really see that power roll in at about 6800 and up. So if we could spend some more RPM, you know, get it to probably the 8000, maybe even the 8500 range, this thing would just really be an animal at that point. And the other thing I want to say is this was dynoed on a dynamite uh, land and sea chassis dyno. And, you know, unfortunately, if you dyno the same car on 10 different dynos, you're probably going to have 10 different dyno results. And at the end of the day, the dyno is just uh, a tool for tuning and to measure and observe changes. So because we did a before and after, we're strictly measuring the gains that we were able to see. Now as far as what the horsepower numbers mean, you're really going to see that on the track side of things rather than just racing dyno sheets. So I will go ahead and put a link to this post we did in tandem with this on Facebook a little while ago and that will have uh, links to all of the testing the raw data that we used to build the spreadsheet that I kind of gave an overview of and if this is something you're interested in doing you can go ahead and check us out at facebook.com slash badguysworldwide or our website badguysonline.com or you can follow us on Instagram at badguys underscore worldwide if you have any questions at all feel free to send us a message to any of our social media and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible and again thank you for watching